Welcome to the Beehive Call. We have Andrew H., Patrick H., Jan B., Patrick M., and myself, Michael. We expect others to trickle in. And a few housekeeping notes. Uh, the meetings moved an hour later a few months ago in order to accommodate or de-accommodate someone in Asia who still couldn't attend. And recordings are online for those who, for that same reason, can't attend. Thank you, time zones. And I am very much open to Zoom and Google Docs alternatives. I've looked at, uh, let's see, Jitsi. However, one of its deal breakers just for general use is that it has removed its screen control, which is kind of important, especially if we have demos and are helping people on these calls or in my work. And the first BeehiveCon at EuroBSDCon is coming up. That will be the Friday day of the tutorials. And uh, I welcome your ideas. Jan, I may corner you about a networking overview because we've made great progress on these calls, just painting that picture. Uh, we have Andrew and Patrick M. from Illumos. Uh, do either of you have news topics or things to share relating especially to the recent Oxide release? I mean, I don't know much about it. And Patrick said he's got nothing. Cool. Well, I will say, if anything, congratulations on that release. And Jan, thank you for posting your blog post. Patrick, I trust you saw that there. Yeah. Uh, so use your best judgment on that. Uh, very briefly, I will point out that Ed Mast asked openly now that you know free bsd 14 has been delayed in various ways hey what are the number one features you want i pointed out beehive arm 64 which has been seen in the wild uh there is orvin's tpm pass through and sprouting from the calls goran also known as mecca has made a port of the software tpm that is the one used in QEMU. And I'm curious if anyone here that's using FreeBSD has wish list items to advocate for to get wrapped up for the 14 release. I have this tiny little RC.t script. Yes, you do. But, um, but uh, ran out of time to ask. Is it in a... Uh, 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 Baptiste court or your court or whose court? Neither uh, right now because he relinquished the ticket. Oh, he did. Okay. Got it. Uh, is it delayed by your lack of time or ability to do certain things or what's holding that up? Someone willing to review it or commit it as is. Okay, so let's get that Usually. out there for review. Go ahead and post that here and now. We have another Patrick M. Welcome, Patrick M. Uh, three Patricks, Patrick M. Two. Cool. Uh, so, Jan, go ahead. Oh, thank you. And you are welcome to drop directly into the doc, but let's do this. So, uh, Patrick Housen, any requests for 14 wish list items? Not in particular. I mean, we have these open bugs in the in the Broadcom network interface that I read about. I have not encountered them in the wild now because we are very conservative with our host updates. ePair has been more or less stable since 13.1 something, so no breakage there. And uh, currently we're doing a mass upgrade of all our hardware from uh, 12 something to 13.2 to get those latest uh, kernel crash by IPv6 fragments bugs uh, closed. Yeah. Um, has anyone looked into the multiple reports of kernel panics with send file and IPsec? Oops, no. <laughs> So supposedly what can happen is basically that from the stack trace, it looks like uh, the IP uh, IPsec code tries to use an unmapped page on a different uh, CPU and then just panics. 
because the M buff is in unmapped memory. Uh, but or the or maybe the V node being sent is there. So yeah, it's Third not clear that. which direction. It's in the back tracker. I, okay. I think the the ones reported were rocked on and it should be fixed, but I don't know if. Let me just check it. While you do that, Patrick McAvoy, do you have any wish list items for 14? For context, Ed Mass reached out and said, hey. Yeah, I saw that on, uh, on Twitter as well. But um, no, it, you guys are the, the wire guard. Yes, please. I just want to plus one on that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and then anything we can do with, with Wi-Fi. But uh, no, like just... Uh, Wi-Fi chipset support or stability on yeah. supported chipsets. Yes, please. Okay, I'll be um, both. <laughs> yeah, it's this for yeah. dock I, I'm shooting. Sure, uh, I'm sure I'm not the first. Understand. Sorry. Uh, Are you interested in Wi-Fi just working uh, on some laptop or uh, just, or do you want to spend the time and effort to really work on the Wi-Fi stack? I'm going to do you a favor. I'm. You don't want me working on the Wi-Fi stack, but uh, okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna stick to videos and, and stuff. Uh, this very much on topic project for this call, uh, called Wi-Fi Box. Correct. Which uh, passes through the Wi-Fi card to a small Linux VM, and then uh, just runs basically a hot a spot <laughs> in reverse. I am a strong supporter of cleverness, and that is very clever. Um, mm. yeah. Try to find it, but it's like well, some definition oh, of clever. Yeah, uh, Wi-Fi. Yeah, open, open, open WRT is very lean on resources, so you can run yes. it in a really, really small VM and have a full-featured router slash simple firewall NAT device. That's that's really great. Uh, personally, I'm very much looking forward to 14 when it gets released because I will finally have a working release for my Raspberry Pi Compute Modules 3, which for some reason are not supported by 13.2. These DT something hardware support files are missing for the compute module, and even if you copy them manually, the, the kernel won't boot. And it runs perfectly well if you just check out current and, and build it yourself or if you use a snapshot image. But without packages and without FreeBSD update, uh, running FreeBSD on a Pi is no fun. You can cross-compile base system packages. Mm -hmm. No, I tried that. Hmm. You can cross-compile but not cross-install. Uh, that was on the ARM or, or and on the stable mailing list, and I was told by by Warner and different other people that you cannot do that. Uh, even if you use userland QEM, I did not do that. I compiled because, on AMD sixty uh, four and tried to install is, on the pipe. There's a kernel module which allows you basically to have the kernel look at the executable, find out that it's for a non-native architecture, and then okay. launch it in QEM or user mode where the system calls are still mapped to native kernel system calls so you don't have to run a oh, kernel. Okay. Really you run the ARM ABI on the FreeBSD system and the user land instructions are jitted and executed. It's okay. not fast but it's an insane hack. It's it's better than the Pi, okay. Oh yes, <laughs> uh, especially for compilation because that's normally not really compute but memory and disk bound and those are yeah. the two things which Stuff of the least. I was I was actually really surprised that the the compute module three is not supported by thirteen because it's been around as long as the Pi three or something. So it's that's not specifically new hardware. Probably that and nobody I, and, I have, and I have this Turing Pi series one with seven of them on board. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, at the risk of losing Patrick M, uh, do you have any leads on non-obvious Zoom alternatives, given that they've been weirding out on AI pollution? And I'm sorry, but the mix of recording and screen control and sharing has worked quite well, but they scare me and my colleagues. Mm. 
Mm. I'll take your silence as a no or you're muted either way. <laughs> we we uh, continue to use Jitsi, Jitsi maybe we don't do recording. I can hear you. So there is that. Yes, go go ahead, Patrick, and we can now hear you. Yeah, Jitsi and Big Blue Button are the two obvious uh, self hosted yeah. alternatives. Yeah, Jitsi. Mm, okay. So and BBB. So uh, they very much had screen control and they said, hey, this is unsafe. Look out, we're removing it. So you could build it yourself to re enable that and take the risks. They do have plugins for recording. So it's sounding like Jetsy and more Jetsy. Go ahead, Jan. Um, for the kinds of screen sharing we mostly do here, um, maybe good enough to have a um, teammate for shared control of a SSH session. And is because that the I don't see shared SSH, a, I think, right? It's kind of... Yeah, it's that. Cool. Yeah, Antonik spun that up and was pretty impressed. Uh, teammate. Give a link for teammate. Sure. Cool. Um, I will kick. You can run your own server. You don't have to trust the third party server, but they do provide a default one. Okay. Uh, different, just different, use, the position to, different uh, use case, not, not very much video conferencing, but for remote support, like mm -hmm. screen control of a customer or something. Totally. I stumbled upon Rust Desk and liked it very much. It's a small Go implementation. It's wow. already ported to FreeBSD. You just do package install and you're up and running with your own server. Okay. And you can prepare a binary for Windows users that contains your public key and the IP address of the rendezvous server in the file name. You zip that up, send it to a Windows running customer, and they just double click it and they're on. Okay, checking. That's, real, that's really nice. Rust desk yeah. server in uh, port. Awesome. Thank you. I wouldn't waste too much time on remote uh, control and shared screens and so on uh, uh, for I, this type of call. Because for this call, yes, but I live and die by it for my work. So there's that. Of course, <laughs> for your work, yes. But... So there's that. Okay, so enough about me and my griping. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jan, what do you have on VXLANs? Um, I looked into the difference between FreeBSD and OpenBSD, the XLAN. And the thing is that, at least on FreeBSD, there is a system call interface to basically have a out-of-band control plane inject the forwarding entries. So basically the MAC address to IP and port mapping, which allows you to get by without a multicast underlay. So those uh, I just uh, lost uh, the XLAN uh, is basically Ethernet over UDP. And the problem is that IP is normally not really designed to have broadcasts, but Ethernet requires them and multicast as well. So any non-unicast traffic is mapped to a multicast group. But that requires that your network underneath supports a native multicast routing, which you can do in your data center, but you can't do on someone else's infrastructure. So there you have to get by with um, unicast. And if you don't want to run another layer of uh, tunneling just to get around that, then you um, have to look into uh, basically populating the what is basically the MAC address table of the VXLAN virtual switch from user land, and it would be really nice to have a bit of tooling, for example, to use something like um, MQTT broker or a console or what any basically source of truth you care about to store this network ID, these are the MAC addresses, these are the IP address and port numbers, and then fill this in, and then you would have a working network, unless you, yeah. Patrick H., any ob observations? Is there maybe a different strategy for that? Not not using VXLAN at the moment in my environment, besides a couple of, of Linux machines at Hetzner hosting. Yeah. So sorry, I'm out. 
out of so my... The, the reason I'm alley. looking into this is that while for jails, it's good enough to have basically a purely routed network, you can't mm -hmm. really uh, bridge a beehive guest into a purely routed network without yeah. basically having your new, an additional network there. Um, okay. you have, yeah. How, how do you get the VXLAN in, into the jail? Into the jail? Um, there are two ways. Either if it's a VNet-enabled jail and you trust it and want it, for example, because it's a dedicated networking jail, then it can contain the interface. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I'm looking into right now is to uh, put it on a bridge as a member interface and then put an ePair on there. Yeah, but, but and, the ePair, e again, uh, emulates a broadcast medium. So I know, I know. That's, that's the point that I don't like about it. Uh, nice but it's what you have to do <laughs> okay if you if you want to have a dynamically pick up basically where you have the network there and then you can dynamically plug multiple jails into it mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for that uh, kind of multiplexing the one vnet uh, sorry vx then interface to multiple vnet enabled jails you have to use a bridge right now there is nothing like <laughs> like this built in because it basically would be a bridge. So why not use the existing code? You don't need one more bridge in the um, corner. It would be great if you could support unnumbered Ethernet interfaces, like reusing a, a single IP address on the host for all of the e pairs, and then use interface routes to reach instead of well, ARP to, um, to reach the jails. The, the host doesn't have to have any addresses right now, uh, for, for what I'm describing. If you're bridging, no, yes, of course. But I'd like to route instead. Yeah, OK. If you route, uh, you can either, uh, if you have a problem with, so now we're getting a bit into a routing theory, is that if you have unnumbered uh, versus numbered interface, the unnumbered one, the local address, which is normally the loopback address of mm -hmm. the router, can be black holed because if the direct connected interface goes down, you won't reroute because you still have a direct corrected route and all your IGP routes are lower priority. Mm -hmm. So unless you can basically have something revoke the route, maybe some kind of a BFD daemon or whatever, you have to risk black holding. Of course, in this kind of virtual environment, Link failure isn't an option because that's purely virtual inside a single box. So if it fails, you broke something. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, again, the annoying part about virtual machines is that everything has to look like Ethernet to them. <laughs> but what I have done and can report on is that I have uh, ripped out the bridge and used the VM net instead of tap devices because uh, that's just a free BSD uh, detail. The VM net and tap uh, devices are provided by the same driver. The only difference is that a top interface goes uh, linked down if the character device uh, used by Beehive is closed which also uh, invalidates all the routes. So the interface just goes down. But a VMNet interface just uh, stays up, so you don't lose your routes, uh, which is easier if you uh, have um, it in a routed configuration. And then instead of a bridge, you just have a bunch of VMNet something uh, interfaces. And you have your routing daemon, for example, BERT, just uh, match them with a glob and we distribute them uh, into the routing protocol of your choice. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, because it's an Ethernet on the VM net, you still need a slash 31 uh, for IPv4 to work. And on some ridiculous operating system, it's slash 30. You can't go fully unnumbered because then you can't use DHCP to provision the guests. You can, in theory, do it with an interface route. Just put a host address on the interface and then use an interface route 
as default uh, route so that you don't have to have your default gateway in your network. Uh, that's supported by a FreeBSD if you do it on your own, but you can't do it via DHCP. So basically you have to provision each guest at this point instead of just having it get an address out of the box using DHCP and stateless auto configuration. I assume for IPv6, it's not a problem because you have enough address space and you're mostly looking to conserve a public IP address space. Or yeah, other constraints. Yesterday you mentioned the vert IO V something. I'm grabbing it right now. VSOC, but that's VSOC, a, yes. a totally different thing. Uh, okay. Just checking. <laughs> and it's not a, supported on any uh, variant of Beehive, I know. Yeah, correct. It's a cool idea because it's almost the last bit IO device driver you ever have to implement if you have it fully supported because anything you can do over a socket can then be done without uh, configuration because it can have all well-known addresses between host and guest. So anything you can tunnel over a stream or datagram socket just works. Right. But that's uh, not relevant here because this is about getting IP addresses. No. All right. Okay. Yeah. Streams. So, uh, Santiago might not be able to join. However, he has shared his exact PR. So let's compare notes on that. It is this one. Um, ba -ba -bum, and it might be pass-through related. Let's see. Uh, Broadcom. Yeah, I know. And, and firmware and hardware bugs again. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. you know, is, has anyone picked up the pieces from uh, oh, Brian Cantrell and Sean Chitten and the, the Oxide uh, predecessor, how are they called again? The uh, oh, they're complete rewrite of all network data structures. They had, yes. they had this FreeBSD VPC thing, right? VPC, yeah, no, that's, that's it. Yeah. VPC. Uh, I looked at the code. The diff was about the size of a network stack. Yep. Because okay. they, they redefined what an MBuff is completely to support gather, gather, and delayed allocation. Basically, what they're doing yeah. is that to get the efficiency they're looking at, they uh, basically reserve a bit of capacity at the beginning, uh, and then basically they can prepend headers, and then you can do all of the encapsulation shenanigans they're describing uh, in a zero copy way because you have pre-allocated space in the beginning of the packet. Mm -hmm. Giant, right? Uh, which is a good idea and so on. But the other part is basically that then they added this uh, list of packet buffers so that you can do batch gather gather operations uh, on packets, mm -hmm. which is a really good idea, but it's such a massive diff that uh, I don't see anyone taking it as is. You oh, yeah. would have to redo their work in tree because as a big project because you can't just drop this on people uh, because it really touches everything network related. It's too invasive. It looks like the, the last and probably the only successful project of that size and approach just replacing everything was ZFS, which works amazingly well. But... Uh, well, yeah. the rebasing of ZFS no, I mean, bring ZFS into FreeBSD, which that what, in, didn't replace anything. The, 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 R, the, arc is the ARC is completely outside of the unified VM buffer cache and all the other mechanisms. And it causes problems to this day on all operating systems. Yeah. But it's an acceptable trade off because the ARC is a lot better yeah. at what it is supposed to do. Yeah. I'm not, not, not objecting. I just wanted to mention it. Yeah, I think it's a comparably sized project, and it's a completely 
alien to FreeBSD at the time it was introduced, stack of a file system and a volume manager and everything. And this one was successful. So I'm just trying to get a grasp of, of the size of this VPC thing. But um, not re the difference is that CFS has a clearly defined upper and lower interface level. Yeah. At the bottom, you have the, in FreeBSD, this case, the GM providers it consumes or any block device like things. And on the upper end, you have the virtual file system. Yep. What happens in between is nobody's business. So that it does not do the normal, something like a, blo uh, a block level volume manager and snapshot manager and so on. And then mutable file system, maybe with snapshotting in between or at the virtual block device level. None of this matters because it's internal to ZFS, which really helps because they didn't have to integrate C volts with genome volume management or something. If you had to do that, it would never work. But in the network stack, you can't really just rip out the network stack and replace it with one which only supports these five network cards. Mm -hmm. None yeah. of which uh, cost less than a good laptop. So yeah, I don't know. Okay. I found the video for the VPC work and I think the code is still kicking around. It's obviously if you have several years out of date, but Jan fundamentally, do you think that is worth someone's academic uh, exploration or not just never academic it's <clears throat> really, um i think it's a really good idea to look into this because we are slowly developing in this direction and at some point the incremental work is more total work and maybe even just as large milestones as doing the refactoring Okay. Again, the problem is that you have to have people dedicated to this work doing yeah, no question. Maybe That's, able yeah. to, maybe possible to basically have those shim so that the ember structure is basically isolate the consumers from the structure definition with macros and static inline functions, similar to uh, EF and uh, net uh, or yeah EFLIP, sorry, not EFNet. Um, this is probably the way to be able to tell people to go through these macros, then you can do it, make sure then hide the symbols by, or rename them so that you find out anyone not observing the new API contract and then you would do the next step okay. of changing the implementation behind the interface. And yeah. Okay, I can, I'm not finding that code, but if someone has a link to the... Uh, oh, it was the so it was joint VPC, uh, yep. uh, FreeBSD, GitHub. Uh, <laughs> here, I've just found it, but it's an archive repository. Well, drop in the link if you would. Okay, thank you. Uh, John, I trust a Broadcom Nick has never bitten you in the behind, so you're not concerned about our discussion of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible. I know. It's a bit early, waiting on my coffee to key in. Um, here we go. Uh, I'll put in the repo. <clears throat> John, you've unmuted and you've got some nice. What, how are you and what's up? Oh, things are fine. I I'm, apologies for being late. I hey, feel like no I'm, worries at all. I've been late for everything this week. Uh, well, of all those obligations, we won't shame you for that. So, uh, I do, have you had any notable Broadcom issues? There are a few folks trying to get them at least the open known ones straightened out for the 14 release, so they do not continue to cause pain and suffering. The answer is no, I have not, but I have minimal Broadcom use. Understood. Understood. 
Okay, thank you, Jan, for posting the repo. That's indeed it from five years ago um, for all those looking for an additional project on their radar. So, um, what else do we have to discuss? Santiago is going to join, but I think he's gotten tied up. But he did give the 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 issue in question, and again, was it pass through related or not? Uh, no, not be hybrid pass through. Okay, so that can wait. Um, and let's see. I know some of you are off to your OBSD con. John, is there any chance we'll see you there? No, I I won't be there. Bummer. Understood. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, who else has topics? We've covered some that I wanted to address. There's, oh, and fine, John, as you've joined, uh, I'll just repeat that same question. Ed Mass said, hey, are there anything you want wrapped? Is there anything you want wrapped up for 14? Yes, if it's not Broadcom Nix, uh, do you have a wish list item for there? Um, a 9PFS client for the FreeBSD kernel. I reached out just recently to the folks, and let me go see what they wrote. So, uh, John D, anything? Uh, nine PFS client. Actually, um, thank you for the reminder on that. While you go ahead, if you're if you're looking for off the wall stuff, um, I would really like to have dynamic uh, uh, VF. Uh, creation for SRIOV on Nix and not the static uh, mechanism we have today. Um, John, uh, the dynamic SRIOV allocation, do you have to like set it at boot time or what? Yeah, dynamic today we today we use the IOV config mechanism. And is there a reason you can't pre-allocate all IOVs supported by your hardware at boot and then dynamically use them? Because I use, I use Mac follows VM, and if I bring a, a system over, okay. then I, I have to... No, the answer is no. I, okay. I find it highly restrictive what we currently have. Uh, uh, the project you described would really be too large to make it, but just the ability to have the host change the MAC address of a VF should be enough to uh, allow the workflow you are describing and maybe uh, in scope so that you can only change the MAC address for a virtual function which has already been created without affecting any other virtual function. So you would boot create all virtual functions, leave the MAC address empty, and before you start using them, you fill out the MAC address, or if you reuse them, you change your MAC address. Uh, I, can't, I, can't argue, I can't argue that, but it seems... Not it's, elegant. Yeah. But with a bit of user line tooling, it would work, and it wouldn't require basically allocating resources, uh, or at least hard to allocate and manage resources in the drivers, because the instance would already be there, the, the queues, the interrupts, all of this would be pre-allocated. You would only fill out the, the six byte MAC address. Does a PCI detaching help you any or hurt you just worse? the fact that you can fully remove a device and bring it back, which is great yeah, for pass-through, but not necessarily IOV. I use, well, that's a different, so that's a different question. I use, I use dev control all, uh, yes. I have de the devices sit as present on the hypervisor. And when I want to use something, I then assign the, the, the pass-through, the PPT driver to it so I and at that point I pass it over into Beehive using its PCI address. But it doesn't help uh, the SRIOV. No, it's not this. Okay, no. Thank okay, thank you. Go ahead, John. 
the existing interface, if you use IOVCDL, destroys all the virtual functions and recreates them. So you would rip out the virtual <laughs> function out of all other guests. I'm not, so, no argument. <laughs> uh, You've confirmed so that, I see. <laughs> okay, understood. I hate, I hate asking to, for. I, and I hate, I hate to say Google. this. Go Apologies. Ahead. I hate to say this because I like FreeBSD, but um, as I have been has been pointed out to me many times by some of my cohorts, Linux supports this just fine. Yeah, that's just a cheap tr troll attempt. No, it's a business mm -hmm. perspective for using or not using a particular technology. You know, stating is it this way, not as. FreeBSD lacks this feature we need. Uh, which you, is you don't need to put that in, Michael. I, I'm just, I'm. No, I'm, it's, it's, it's a, a valid a point. Theme, a valid point is. is what we can do that can't be done on Linux, but inversely, there are clear things that yeah. are you know, the opposite of that. So uh, that said, uh, I hear you, and I, I've been meaning to tinker with my own SRV, SRIOV hardware for some time. So let's make note of that. And uh, duly noted, and that will not be here, I'm sure, for 14 unless someone has a massive amount of time and caffeine. No, right. That's why I said it was co that's completely, completely blue sky. Thanks for bringing uh, John, it up. Have you looked into the uh, have you looked into how IOV CTL is implemented and what the interface looks like? Because uh, maybe it's only that the user space does all of the steps always and uh, it's already broken up into easier system calls with less data, or does it just send a giant NV list with all the configuration as one I, I octal or something? So the answer is I have looked into it. I've actually posted about this at one point. Um, and, and if you hang on a minute, I can probably find it. I have one private question. I have a semi beehive success story from today. And I have this very tiny super microsystem and I decided that I want to bring it to EuroBSDCon. So I have some infrastructure for my tutorial because depending on the, the uplink bandwidth they have, it's probably not good to have all the SMDs download huge vagrant images from the internet. So I'll bring them on some kind of file server. <laughs> uh, so the speed is up. I set up a TrueNAS core. I did create a VM with OpenSense on it with two network interfaces, PCIe pass through, and all of that works fine and fast and stable. Really dandy. Uh, minor problem, the VM does not reboot. Does this sound familiar to anyone? It shuts down probably, flushes all the buffers. Then the last thing I see is IX1 interface state change to down, and then the VM just hangs. <coughs> a power um, off works, a reboot does not, until I use the, the TrueNAS UI to power it off forcefully and then restart it. Sounds like I, a I, I'm, I'm messed with, with hardware.acpi, do reset something settings, but uh, no avail. I tried every combination available. So I had a kind of similar problem with Intel i9 30 uh, 1 gig NIX, uh, where basically you had the, the translation from function uh, from basically complete device reset to virtual function reset, it caused the card to not reset completely. Oh. And then uh, it would only boot once, and unless you reboot the host completely, uh, it would never work again. And the solution was to have a two-line or three-line change to the a guest driver where it would basically, oh, if the hardware ba driver bails out because the hardware is not in the proper state, do another reset. Mm -hmm. It was oh. basically reset the device twice in the guest uh, during Okay, the that, that, sounds in that sounds interesting. Um, Michael, it's it's IX1 and this interface but is this interface is down anyway. That's the interesting part. <laughs> I'm, I'm not using it. 
and uh, it, the kernel just tells me last thing it does um, that it's changed to down from down again and then it hangs but for some reason. In my case, the virtual That's machine weird. did shut down, but the, when it uh, was started up again, the uh, driver would refuse to attach. Mm -hmm. Do you have any links relating to those issues or what might be the same issue and not tried within the context of the Beehive? Let's see, I'll do a quick search here until Anyway, if you come up with links, uh, do you share them? because that's one of those issues that could easily go unnoticed or be um, hard to pin down. And I just looked at the uh, IOV CTL user space. It does what I um, was afraid it, uh, it would do. It sends a big IO um, V configuration and V pair over to the kernel with all the configuration. It's not break, broken up the old fashioned way with multiple smaller I octets so that you don't have to exchange nested structures. It just does it with in the lists. Do you have uh, a nifty link to that exact code? No, it's just uh, the okay. IOVCTL.c file and base. Okay. Uh, Got it. Um, anyway, thank you. Those are important short and long-term topics. Uh, I do have news. Thanks for the nudge. Uh, I Let's see. Steve responded that Joyent indeed has progress on the 9P client, but it needs to be upstream, so he will investigate. Don't all celebrate at once. I'm kidding. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> other that would be really good. Okay, yeah, it just I'll sounds so familiar. We have code. It's just stuck in purgatory. Yeah, Ready Stephen K. I've talked to the group. They all just got a review. You, you can link to. Uh, what we can test Bill, what's it's, there. It's completely out of date. That's the problem. So he will nudge his staff and hopefully have something sooner rather than later. So, because it's really. Frustrating to have a 9P server, but not a client. So yeah, yes. lots of Linux guests. And we not only have the 9P server in Beehive, there is a standalone one in the code itself that's easy to spin up and build. So build and spin up. So there's that. But that code is not kernel ready. It's Fair just enough. A, it's a simple a proof of concept, but it's it. It's a synchronous it client, mm -hmm. no queue. No uh, asynchronous operation, and yeah, it's all yeah, a, client, a, client would improve, a client would improve things in the Vagrant ecosystem, too. I'm not quite sure if we have a 9P server on, on macOS, but I assume that there is because the server is, seems to be the easier part. The and, server is easy, and uh, at the moment, we're stuck with, with NFS. And the problem with installing to NFS is that you, the normal make install world uh, explodes because it can't set the file system flags. You well, can override those. And so on, you can a, delay a, a server this. for macOS. A, a server. For macOS. Goodness, so, we can, a... so we can run FreeBS DVMs in Vagrant on a Mac and on Windows, yada, yada, yada. Goodness, OK. <laughs> well. Take a look at the primitive single yeah. single threaded ones. Oh. If anything, it might come up pretty quickly. What's uh, nice to know is that um, the high idle power consumption for FreeBSD guests on QMU on ARM64 Max has been fixed, uh, supposedly. Uh, you no longer have to lower the tick rate. The default now works correctly was some inefficiency in the driver causing macOS to um, consider you so interactive that it's best to just pull it all the time. And yeah. Oh. So this means you can have using your front end like UTM 
FreeBSD ARM64 virtual machines on Macs. Uh, Antronig is doing very well with that on his humble MacBook Air fanless until it overheats and then you have a problem. Oh. Other hot topics. The couch. There's that. There's that. Other hot topics. The sooner we finish this, the sooner I can post yesterday in today's meetings. Well, thank you for all those insights. Uh, and let's see, Patrick M, you'll have your hands full at Euro. Patrick H, M H, you'll have your hands full. So yeah, Jan, let's talk about what perhaps we can collaborate on for Euro BeehiveCon. Michael, and of course, we'd love to see I you there. Go ahead, John. The, I just posted a uh, hacker's email that I sent about the SRIOB. Oh, stuff. thank you. Beautiful. I think uh, that that email is much more clear than my my simple comment that I just made. Rule number one, have your links handy for this exact reason. Thank you. Let's all just take a quick look at that. Do you guys want to stream that, the be, uh, BeehiveCon? Uh, if it's not burden burdensome to you, uh, I suppose that would be good. I definitely want to record it. And okay. Are you doing it the same time as the Dev Summit? Yeah, it's on the Friday of the Dev Summit, so it would be in parallel. Okay. Uh I the net the net BSD folks haven't gotten back to me yet, but I, I think we can we I will plan for uh the bandwidth for that. Appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Well there you go, John. Thank you. Noted. And this was just over a year ago. Yes. Did anyone show interest in Yeah, one concerns? one person responded to it. Um, yeah, maybe. Michael, who's been on the calls quite reliably. Yeah. Surprised he's not here today. Let's see what he said. Uh, I'm just thinking out loud here. Just... And that was that, huh? Yeah. Okay, noted. One of the... Go ahead, Jan. If I remember correctly from some of the old Meningist threads I've just stumbled through, rattling in the back of my head. Uh, at least on some uh, cards, you can't dynamically create virtual functions without interrupting ones, the ones you have. For example, on older Intel 10 gigs, depending on how many uh, virtual functions you create, you can have a different number of queues per virtual function. So let's say if you have your just as an example, if you have eight uh, functions and 16 queues, you only get two queues per virtual function. But if you have four, four functions, you can have twice as many queues, which means you can make efficient use of more cores. That's correct. And so you can't reallocate those and rip them out I guess you could, in theory, emulate them with VM exits and then all hell breaks loose, but uh, you can't reclaim these resources and reconfigure the hardware without changing it completely in such a way that all the other guests get inter um, interrupted. So you may have to basically pre-define the layout the one you want at least. Yeah, completely dynamic would require a power virtualized driver. Cool. In between. Which would also be required a better one than the current VidIO net driver uh, for migration. Because you can't really migrate a physical device. <laughs> So if you read the email, you will note I'm not actually asking to create additional or delete virtual function devices. I'm asking for an update option so that the MAC address can be 
made sticky. Yeah. Or the MAC address can be changed. Let me phrase it that way. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's due to the VM. Which is different from what you just wished for uh, a few minutes ago. But yeah, yeah I, I understand. My, my, my wording was, was bad, and I'm perfectly happy to let Michael go back and, 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 and use real English. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it's. How about it's just v, VF MAC address? Uh, uh, dynamic VF Mac updating. Yeah, that may be possible because the VF referring to what a member virtual of us? the actual virtual function device. Got it. So this is what happens when you just ask me a question on the spot and I try to answer you with and, and just totally <laughs> screw it up. It's a hundred times better than it being in the back of your head for a few years and never being vocalized. So, no, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, yeah, you could probably, except that it's your link. You could, if you change the I'll link change here it. up above, you can just get rid of that. Well, <laughs> it's well, so a completely different issue or no longer of concern to you? Your it's, mailing list post. No, the mailing list post is the is the issue. Okay. Where, uh, where I actually wrote down the, the 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 issue as I will label it as exactly what it is a mailing list post. Okay. <laughs> oh, excellent. Yeah. Just uh, okay, and it's still you pre-allocate all of your Macs, and yes, if you need to move a machine between machines, hardware machines, you have a problem. Correct. Yes, that's correct. Okay. okay. Mac addresses yeah. currently. Sorry, I did well. Let's do it. Let's get that out there currently. And uh, with no chance of them following VMs to different. Got it. Okay. Uh, Jan, you've spent a lot of time on the complexity of things such as joints work. Is, is that a simpler subset of to-do list items or? The IOVCTL, um, just patching the MAC address uh, should be, by comparison, trivial. Well, by, compar it's a, <laughs> by comparison to a bad example of a massive example, but uh, yeah. do we know <laughs> if, like, who's Owning this, I saw one to... come up with the manual page. Um, because uh, if there are any um, tentacles waiting to come out of a deep, uh, dark water to just drag you down if you touch it, I don't <laughs> know what's... Uh, very dramatic. I'm, I'm not familiar with this part of the code, so it's probably a problem of getting the right developer's attention. Yeah, we please, have. A... Please, please look, look into this small corner case instead of uh, saying, "Oh no, the ge general case is too hard." Okay. Well, then that is one to pursue. Well, overall, it's a great list of wish list items. We are fleshing out network issues right, left, and center. Appreciated. Of course, if we are uh, adding things of this scoop. Uh, I would like to see uh, that Netvid IO uh, driver. Repeat that? Which what? for the VPC stuff may be really the way to go. In the, what uh, IO driver, Jan? A Vid IO uh, with proper and complete in kernel netmap processing. Maybe with the option of either attaching to a netmap capable card or a veil uh, switch. Board. Right. Okay. Which we only have half of because uh, the mem copy still happens in a VMX is served by the Beehive demon right now. So there is a netmap that I own mode, and it's but on the other side, it's also still still a single queue. So yeah, there are multiple uh, problems. 
now that the bridge has been fixed in 13.1 and 2, that we see the next bottleneck. Okay. So it's, it's uh, apologies, Michael, for, for doing it to you once more, but if in the comment where Linux does this, you could replace that with here. That's the that's how that would work. I need to uh, go on mute for just a moment. I apologize. No, no apologizing, man. You're doing great work. So yeah, talk to you soon. Uh, okay, that's it. And Patrick, for the fifth H for the fiftieth time, do you have your uh, True NAS bridge closed PR handy? I I squirreled it away and couldn't find it. <laughs> I'd like to drop it in context if handy. You probably have it framed. Uh, no, <laughs> but I'll find it on the on the IX system. Uh, Jira. Jira. It might be in my history, maybe not. And no. Okay. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, does anyone present have experience with triaging like PRs and? the ability to close them because several have answers that are are accurate but the pr is sitting around for like five to ten years uh i don't have the permission to close a pr does anyone present have that not all at once <laughs> yeah that'll be our new meme anyway uh, that's enough topics. If we can get you know movement on those, uh, very good things will happen. I am happy to call this at let's just say eleven oh five a.m. Pacific. And anything else? Last minute. Here's the link, Michael. Thank you, sir. It is eighteen oh five. Eighteen oh five. You can see. Yes, thank you, sir. I'll paste that in. I do want this all documented. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, if I can find my place. Well, anything else, or shall we call it good? Well, thank you, everyone. See you in perhaps a week. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Okay. Take care.